uh, the talk today is on the talk today is on biomechanics of knee and design rationale of tikka normally a talk on biomechanics one hour after the lunch session is a perfect recipe for sedation but thankfully uh, for uh, such a wonderful talk by dr jain we have all woken up uh, on the research front and i'm sure that the talk would evoke uh, interest now having said that uh, in 10 minute time we have to cover design rationale for joint replacements as you might be aware that current number of joint replacements available in market is around 140 so i would just be touching briefly on the main uh, available uh, uh, groups of joint replacement which are mobile versus fixed bearing knees high flex knee gender specific knee single radius implants and patient specific implants now what makes all these joint replacement processes different and why do different companies promote their own brand and say that one is better than the other they all think in three terms in terms of motion that they can give in the terms of fit and the wear that these joint uh, or the longevity of these implant before we move on to the specifics of uh, the individual implants just a few words about the normal knee kinematics most knee have a medial pivotal axial rotation pattern that is the lateral femoral condyle rotates around relatively stationary medial femoral condyle and under weight bearing conditions around 16 to 17 degrees of rotation occur at the tibia it is we all know that there is a screw home mechanism in which the internal rotation of tibia occur in flexion and external rotation occurs in extension another important thing is that meniscus increase conformity and is mobile and therefore it allows an ap glide with during the rotation of the joint another important concept that we must know before we move on to the individual joint is the concept of wear there are two primary types of wear which is articular and under surface wear articular is secondary to the high contact stress stresses and is more common in less conforming joints whereas the under surface wear is between the tibial base plate and the poly it is the price that we pay for the modularity and uh, this kind of wear usually does not occur in monoblock designs now the first implant that i'm going to talk about is mobile bearing implant there there are three types of commonly available mobile bearing implant and they are all des um, determined in terms of the plateau mobility one those that offer pure rotation the other ones offer ap translation and then the unconstrained type one of the first mobile bearing implants used to be oxford uni which allowed ap transition translation then there is the other one which is the low contact stress by the depew which allows pure rotation and then there is the similar named but a meniscal bearing implant by depew which allows both rotation and ap translation the former sulzer had self aligning knee replacement which again allowed both rotation and ap translation now the concept of mobile bearing was based on the fact that since there is a dual surface articulation there would be less sub surface and surface contact stress because it increases the conformity and also it allows the mobility of the bearing surface now you can have a look at the graph here and it will show that with the mobile bearing interface there is a higher contact area and so the amount of stress that can be generated is less and therefore there is a theoretical advantage in terms of the longevity of these implants and this was also replicated in vitro where their improved kinematics was suggested to closely resemble that of natural knee and it would reverse axial rotation and paradoxical um, uh, anterior femoral translation and the femoral condylar lift off was minimized these are all technical terms but in short in vitro it was thought that these would improve longevity of the implant um, again uh, similarly here the article would show that the knee simulator studies concurred with these views you can see on the graph that the wear on fixed rotating uh, fixed uh, bearing implants was much higher than the rotating platform implants however when it actually came to the money shot the, the cochrane review abstract showed that there was no superiority of any processes or other as regard to the range of motion and functional performance and also now in terms of longevity is what is the suggestion the probable reason is again the fact that this uh, the advantage that the mobile bearing offered in terms of less wear in uh, less fatigue wear was being neutralized by the adhesive wear that these had 
Coming to another group of implant, uh, which is the single radius implant, commonly known as Scorpio. The, the basic biomechanical philosophy behind these implants is that it, is a, it has a single um, radius in the, flexion, in the entire flexion extension axis compared to the other implant. And this um, yields a circular knee rotation, allowing a smooth transition from flexion to extension while preserving the collateral ligament isometry. You can look at this picture here and it will show that this is how the other uh, competitive designs suffer from the lack of uh, collateral tension during the mid-range 30 to 45 degree, whereas there is a complete isometry uh, in a single radius implant. Another advantage that these implants had was that they had a reduced Q forces because of the um, uh, of the longer uh, moment arm of the implant which gave uh, which resulted in less anterior knee pain but again all these advantages seem to be theoretical as uh, the authors found out that there was equal extensor mechanism function in all the designs in fact there was suggestion that this could even be detrimental because of uh, because increasing the collateral ligament tension in flexion could actually decrease the actual flexion occurring in the knee. Again, coming to another important uh, group of implant that we keep hearing off and on again is gender specific implant. Now, the rationale behind these implants was that there existed biomechanical differences in male and female population. And there were many studies which uh, showed that these um, uh, differences did exist in terms of gait, kinematics, and kinetics. If you look at the picture here, this is how the company said, or in fact the studies have shown that the male and female um, femur differ in anatomy. We talk about the aspect ratios um, in which the mediolateral and AP ratio of the, um, the morphology of the femur is being calculated. Now, the Zimmer came out with a gender specific implant in which they have a different trochlear groove angle which has a difference of around 3 degrees and also the difference in anterior flange thickness and um, it suggested that the female resection needed to be less compared to the male resection and also the width of the flange anteriorly should be different in male and female. Again, the question arises: do we really need these separate implants for males and females? Again, the results showed that the, there was not much difference in the results with either the gender specific implant or the normal implant that we used. Another important topic that we keep on hearing is high flexion knees. So what exactly is high flexion? High flexion is any design that allows flexion beyond 125 degrees. We all know that everyday activities like level walking, walking up and down stairs and rising for chair, uh, a 120 degree flexion would suffice but there are certain activities which need flexion beyond that like gardening, squatting and kneeling. So in order to design a um, high flex knee, what were the essential design features? One, that they said that an increased posterior condylar offset was necessary to maintain bearing conformity and decrease line contact stress. Then it was thought that an extended trochlear groove for congruent patellar contact was necessary to achieve high flexion. There were design modification necessary to uh, enable the poly or uh, the polyethylene to have an anterior recess to accommodate the increased excursion of the extensor mechanism. And most studies showed that a knee design that allows full flexion must have two essential features. That it must be posteriorly stabilized to direct a predictable femoral rollback and that the femoral component must have a decreasing sagittal radius. So if you look at the uh, uh, design modifications, the high flexion design should typically have an extra bone cut here and the curve, the J curve of the high flexion should be even more posteriorly recessed compared to the traditional TKR. Similarly in the poly there is a there is an increased recess for accommodating the patellar tendon excursion and the increased uh, posterior femoral offset. This is how they look different. This is the conventional, this is the high flexion implants. This is just a small table to show that the best results for the flexion was obtained with posterior stabilized implant compared to all other group of implant here in different conditions. 
Uh, another important category that we keep hearing about is patient specific or race specific implants. We all have seen or heard about patient specific instrumentation. But this is a new genre of uh, implant design which is now being touted as the next big thing. Um, there have been plenty of studies which have shown that there exist race differences uh, in terms of the anthropometry of knees. And hence this new technology which actually um, takes in account the patient's own data from MRI and then designs um, the patient specific implants, not only just instrumentation but also implants which will fit or replace only the damaged part of the knee joint. It is, uh, there are not many companies which are manufacturing and most of these are in experimental stage but there is an increasing trend towards use of these implants in certain centers. This uh, technology actually uses a rapid prototyping technique which is already making quite a bit of news in trauma surgery. On a lighter note, there is another category of uh, implant that may soon be a future which is a patient demand designs. Uh, we have not yet reached a stage but there might be some, it's, the day may not be far off when pe people would demand particularly customized implants for themselves like belt in MP3 players or touch screen implants. So thank you all.